And welcome to the Kiosk Presents. I'm Steve. Today we have Jeff Stroll, Director of Research at Georgetown University Center on Education and the Workforce. That's a mouthful, Jeff. <laughs> That's what I always say. All right. The longer the title, the more important it must be. Right. Tell us a bit about what you do. Uh, well, I'm the Director of Research at the Center, so I do a lot of work in developing uh, uh, projects. Okay. Uh, now, you do have a recent project that's come out uh, talking about uh, race and how it affects university attendance. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, our study is looking at how the post-secondary system has changed from 1995 to 2009. And what we find is there's been an increase of racial polarization uh, as we've also seen increasing access by minorities. So more minority students are going, but when they're going, they're going to the least selective and open access two and four year schools, while the majority of white students, 80% of all new white enrollment, has gone to the top 468 most selective universities. And this matters because if you control for test score, there would be a, there's a huge difference in graduation rate. For people with the test, same test scores going to these different schools, it's about 82% uh, of students at the top schools graduate, 49% in the open access. So we end up with minority students who don't graduate and a lot of equally qualified white students who do, and that has a lot of impact on life outcomes. Yep. Uh, now, does the rising price of ed higher education have any effect on this? Um, we suspect that it does because the low-income students, of course, don't bring a lot of money with them. And so more affluent, top-scoring uh, uh, white students do. And the elite schools really, although they do give a lot of merit scholarships, can't be, don't have enough money to uh, give merit scholarships to everyone. Yeah, you, you can't level the playing field. There just isn't enough money out there. Right. Uh, but... All right, so you have a whole bunch of students who are in the minorities attending the community colleges locally, which it's great that they're attending, but they should be attending, because their scores are high enough, the higher, the better schools that are around. Yes. All right, uh, now what's going on with the University of Texas in the case that's going on there? Uh, well, this study really is meant to take us outside of the realm of uh, limited uh, cases on affirmative action, because what our study shows is that the problems that affirmative action is attempting to address really permeate the entire system. So we're truly trying to look at how it is that there are big differences in racial attendance by race uh, across the top 468 schools, not just a limited number of Ivy League schools. So we're talking about how this impacts millions of minority students. And so we're trying to, in the, in the framework of the Texas case, it's that affirmative action probably is a Band-Aid to a much bigger problem. Okay. Now you keep mentioning 468 schools at the top. How did you guys come to that determination as that being the relevant number? Oh, we use uh, a common metric of selectivity. It's from Barron's uh, uh, Admissions Competitive Index. And so they've uh, uh, defined schools as being selective based on their uh, test, school, test scores of the students and how many students get in based on school rank, et cetera. Okay, so these are really the relevant schools. Absolutely, uh, yes and have the higher graduation rates like you were talking about earlier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, parents want, obviously want their kids to have the best education. What can parents do to help get access to the top schools? Well, I think a lot of this comes down to information. I mean, uh, a lot of low-income and minority students just don't know that they can actually get into these schools, so they don't even apply. And so one of the first big steps for students who think that they can't afford these schools is still to actually try. Uh, because they'll be surprised that they can get scholarships, they'll be surprised that their test scores will get them entry. So I think that is a very important step. There's so many great schools out there, and a lot of them have fairly low, like some of the best schools don't have that high of standards, and even the best schools, a lot of people with the test scores that were talked about in your report, uh, a lot of them w were doing excellently and still went to community college. Well, um, the... Uh, um, the, the test scores that the students have should really get them into the places where um, the resources are given to the students to really help them graduate. A lot of that, a lot of this is what this is all about, is that these students have proven 
test scores that show us that they're ready and able to graduate and that the more selective schools have a lot more money to help get the students out the door and graduate and then those students go on to graduate school at a much higher rate so the outcomes are much better so aiming and planning what you do for students is, is very important uh, Jeff thank you very much for talking to us about it it's glad to raise awareness about the topic uh, if you're a student in high school and you're looking towards college apply to the best schools apply to the schools that are going to get you the furthest in life you'll never know what you're going to get approved for until you try that's right all right Jeff uh, thank you for joining us here on the kiosk presents and have a great day thank you